Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha! I'm Kendrick Goh, a 2012 graduate of Damien Memorial High School. I'm Caitlin Inamasu, a 2011 graduate of Henry Perrine Baldwin High School. And I'm Gerald Salih, a 2012 graduate of Farrington High School. All three of us are also graduates of Hikino, the nation's first statewide student news network. In this episode, we'll be showcasing some of the outstanding stories from season three of Hikino. We'll also let you know a little bit about our plans for the future and how Hikino prepared us for that future. We're living proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do. My experience on Hikino taught me how to work on a team to accomplish goals bigger than myself. It also inspired me to pursue my dream of serving the people of Hawaii. So I've enrolled at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where I plan to be part of the pre-med program and eventually become an orthopedic surgeon. Students from Aliamanu Middle School on Oahu have also learned to work together as a team, both on the production of the following Hikino story and on solving the problem of dangerous conditions for pedestrians around their campus. Salt Lake Boulevard is the main corridor through the heavily populated Salt Lake neighborhood. In particular is the intersection at Alalili Koi and Salt Lake Boulevard, where there is a shopping center, public library, and two schools. Cars are constantly flying by Allium Mono Middle School. This creates a hazardous mix in which there is a large amount of motor vehicle and foot traffic in a small concentrated area. Going from the middle school and the elementary school down to the crosswalk is quite a, quite a little walk for them to turn and go back up into the shopping center. Uh, and so they jaywalk across that narrow strip out there. Jaywalking, it's, also, it's illegal and you must stay in the crosswalk area by crossing the street for your safety and uh, the law states that you, uh, to cross any major street you should be in a marked crosswalk. Some students are taking an active role in creating awareness of the situation. Well, I'm a part of National Junior Honor Society, and what we are doing to help raise awareness about jaywalking is we are hanging posters all around the school to just basically say that it's not just harming yourself, it can actually harm people around you too. Even teachers are getting involved by making a PSA in one of their video production workshops. Uh, makes me very sad to see that adults sometimes don't set the example. And the students that jaywalk, it's not worth risking your life. In late 2011, the road was repaired and signs were put out to help with the flow of traffic. Other improvements to this stretch of Salt Lake Boulevard regarding pedestrian traffic and road widening are planned for the future. It's been a long time coming, um, so for the community, they have to be a bit more patient. I know they feel that they've been overly patient, but uh, government doesn't move sometimes as quick as business does. In an emailed statement, this is what Honolulu City Council member Romy Cachola had to say. Currently, engineers are studying the environmental impacts of the project and will release a formal study called an environmental assessment for the public to review late this year or early 2013. I have contacted the city's Department of Transportation Services to also study the history of accidents in this intersection. The problem of jaywalking and other traffic related concerns in Salt Lake will continue unless the entire community gets involved, hopefully before something tragic happens. From Ali Amato Middle School, I'm Bailey Young for Hiki No. I was a student reporter in the inaugural season of Hiki no back in 2011. Seeing my work on PBS Hawaii inspired me to pursue my passion for journalism, so I enrolled in the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. to study political communication within their School of Media and Public Affairs. During my first year there, I helped to write and produce nationally televised public service announcements and worked on policy initiatives affecting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. The basic storytelling skills I learned from Hikino have been a tremendous asset for me in college. They are the same skills employed by the students of Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai in this report on the Hanapepe Salt Ponds. Oh, 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 
For many years now, in Hanapepe, 26 families on the island of Kauai have been making pa'akai, or better known as Hawaiian salt. How pa'akai is made is water travels underground into wells. The water is then taken from the well and moved into a holding bed. A holding bed heats the water before it's transferred into the actual bed. In the bed is where the salt crystallizes and forms different flakes. Making pa'akai takes a lot of time, so all the families need to work hard to get the job done. Traditionally, um, I, I, I find that we've been making the salt after uh, King Kamehameha Day, just around that time, during the summer when the sun is hot. The traditions that are passed down start from an early age. The lessons that they learn stick with them throughout their whole life, and they pass it on to their own children. Well, my aunt and uncle were with the Order of Kamehameha, and when he died, Auntie Annie asked me to come and join them in making salt, so I said, well, sure. I wanted to learn to do that anyway. So why don't they just buy salt in the stores instead of going through the whole process? The one you buy at the store is mined. The one we make is from ocean water. And plus, like I say, it seeps from outside in the ocean and it comes up even saltier by our wells. Being able to take a part in this tradition is a fun and lucky opportunity. We love the fact that we get to stand in the exact same place that our grandmother stood or our grandfather stood and do the exact same thing that he did just because we love our culture. So whether they're a kapuna that is happy to pass down what they know or one of the young kikis who are just as eager to learn, they're all just thankful that they get to be a part of a rare activity and pass down many traditions. For you know, this has been Kaylee Esposo reporting from Chivas Kamakahele Middle School. A teacher once told me a quote that I will never forget. You can give a man a fish and feed him for a day, or you can teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. That is how I look back on my experiences as a Hikino student. Having been taught how to tell stories with digital media, I will be able to communicate effectively for the rest of my life. I intend to improve on those skills by pursuing an associate's degree in computer engineering and network technology at Honolulu Community College. In the following story on Alzheimer's disease, Hikino students from Maui High School have proven that they can communicate in ways that are both informative and moving. And you have to find humor in life, otherwise you can go crazy pretty fast. For Maui resident, Miss Martha Watkins, finding humor while caring for her mother keeps her sane. Have such pretty hair, Mom. In 2010, 87-year-old Beth Snyder Watkins was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I just started noticing that um, she wasn't, you know, being as good about taking the pills. Um, she was forgetting things. There's areas that are affected by the disease that impair thought and memory. What we notice first is that it's a short-term memory. Alzheimer's, a form of dementia, kills brain cells causing loss of memory and unpredictable actions. She said things like, oh, that's such a nice battery on the top of that pole, or that man has a nice battery on his head. So <laughs> there are moments of, <laughs> of fun. After short-term memory loss and repetition, patients often regress back to their childhood. She's that teenager who wants her mom and dad. She wants to go home. And so not realizing that that home and her parents are past. As the disease progresses, their ability to interact with others worsens. The hardest part of the whole thing, um, besides just watching somebody so intelligent uh, lose, <laughs> lose their ability to communicate, uh, it was when she no longer knew who I was. So essentially, I lost my mother at that point. Don't do that. Currently, there are no proven preventions or cures for Alzheimer's, but certain medications help slow down its effects. If you can see the humor in a situation, it's a whole lot easier to deal with. It's very, very, very important to get those moments of happiness. This is Rachel Andrada from Maui High School for Hikino. <laughs> yes, you do. All right. <laughs> Animal populations have grown astronomically throughout the islands and have made it difficult to care for our four-legged friends in a humane way. Here's an excellent story from Lahaina Intermediate about one community's efforts to take control of the situation. 
According to the Maui Goodness.com, there are anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 homeless cats on Maui. The SPCA Maui organization has come together to make an attempt at ending the pain and suffering of this population on Maui. Our total focus is spay and neuter. And we feel with the, the overpopulation of animals throughout the country, on Maui what we want to focus on is prevention. On January 8th, a spay and neuter clinic was held at the Maui Humane Society. When the cat owners and collectors got to the clinic, they had to check in. After they organized the cats, they sedated and shaved the females in the surgery room. A lot of these cats live outside and these females can get pregnant six times a year and have six kittens every litter. So it's really important to try to control the population here in Maui by having these female cats spayed. After the tattooing in the room, they would be placed outside in their cage. So we're here on the recovery section of the um, surgical part of it. We have over 25 additional volunteers here today. And then when they're more um, alert, we'll call their family to come and pick them up. Well, I think we have 180 cats today that we're doing. We're terrifically pleased today. Of course, we're always happy to have as many cats as we can. Our goal was 80, and it looks like we've doubled our goal, so I think we've done a really good job. The volunteers and coordinators feel a spay and neuter clinic has made a positive impact on the community. Local residents know the overpopulation of homeless cats on Maui is a problem. This event will prevent the birth of hundreds, if not thousands, of unwanted cats in the future. This is Kaylee Harmon, Anise Bell, and Kaylin Matsuda from Lahaina Intermediate for Hikino. One thing Hikino can do better than just about any other program on television is to give us honest, up-close views of problems faced by teens and preteens. That's because the stories are told by the peers of those suffering from these problems. Here's a very candid, moving story from the students at Maui Waina Intermediate about a syndrome suffered by too many adolescent girls. Casey Arase is an 11-year-old at Maui Waina Intermediate School. Everyone views Casey as a healthy, normal 6th grade girl, but when Casey looks in the mirror, she sees something else. Well, I remember um, when I was little, I used to always love Disney princesses and how they used to be so skinny. So when I found out, when I was old enough to look in the mirror and see I'm not like them, it made me realize that I think I'm fat. Basically, girls who think they're fat when they're not is based around their body image. And typically that means that they have a poor body image. And our body image is how we perceive our bodies. It's something that's psychological. It's not necessarily based on facts. Well, I know I should be thinking that a beautiful girl is nice, sweet, kind, but my image of a beautiful girl is skinny, pretty, small, and that girl is just not me. Even with her busy life and many accomplishments, Casey is still hindered by her self-image. Well, I'm not as confident. It makes me feel more shy or bashful because, like, you know, I'm scared of what pe might pe people might think about me. Because of how female beauty is depicted in advertising and the media, many girls find it difficult to reconcile what they think they should be with who they are. Sometimes, yeah, I feel like I, sh I have to be perfect. And we're seeing images of women that have this unachievable body. 5'11 and 117 pounds, whereas the average woman is about 5'4 and 140 pounds. Faced with the problem of achieving the impossible, how should we respond? I honestly don't know. I, tr I try to, I try to like every day figure that out, but I just can't. 
there's a lot of really good websites out there with a lot of really good information and you know chat rooms and and stuff like that and if you do feel like yours is a more serious problem you know definitely do go seek help from the grade level counselor or talk to your parents about it and seek counseling outside of school today casey may not know how to solve the problem but hopefully in the future she will be part of the solution this is Gal Tolentino from Maui Waina Intermediate School, reporting for Hikino. Hikino teaches us that every school in Hawaii is different, and every Hikino school is allowed to show how unique it is, especially the home-based schools that host each episode. Here's a little insight shared by Halau Kumana Charter School during their home-based show. We're here at Ka'alaya on the windward side of Oahu, a very important place for Halau Kumana. Here, the 9th and 10th graders learn Hawaiian and modern navigation skills on Kanehunamoku, a double-hauled sailing canoe anchored here in Ka'alaya in Kaneohebe. One of the most important aspects of sailing on a canoe is learning and being able to apply all safety procedures. One of the safety procedures students practice and learn is a man overboard drill. During this drill, a crew member will jump overboard and all other crew members will work together to help get that man back on board safely. One of the regular features on Hikino is what we call franchise pieces, short news you can use presentations that show us how to, how to cook something, how to build something, how to repair something, or in the case of this franchise piece from Hilo High School, how to make something very useful out of practically nothing. In these economic times, $10 could be put to better use than into a brand new wallet. Today we'll show you how to make your own. First you'll need a roll of tape and a pair of scissors. To start off, lay out one strip longer than that of a dollar bill and cut it. Now lay out a second strip and of equal size and overlay it a quarter of an inch over the other. Make two more of these and overlay each other on the adhesive sides. You'll need to make two identical pieces of these for both walls of the wallet. To patch up the sides, you'll need to take two small pieces of tape to fit on either side of the wallet. It's okay to have a bit of excess because you can always snip those off, like this. Now to patch up the bottom, you'll need to take an elongated piece of tape and simply lay it over one side and the other. Now give it a fold right down the middle so you can have it collapsible. And now, you are ready to use it. Hikino is often most profound when it accomplishes something that sounds very simple, helping us to see. To see beneath the surface, to see through our own stereotypes, or to see past people's disabilities. Here is a profound story from Waianae Intermediate that helps us to see past one student's mode of mobility. Three. Uh, okay. Koviko Palakiko is a typical 13-year-old boy who enjoys basketball, playing video games, and joking around. We act like regular brothers do. You know, we fight, we play games with each other, we watch TV, we, you know, we tease each other, we make each other laugh. He also has dreams for his future. He wants to be... A super hero. <laughs> But before he can save the world, he has to overcome a few obstacles. He was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It affected his muscles and he cannot walk. And he was also exposed to ice. His mom was on drugs. So he had ice in his system and that kind of destroyed some of his nerves. Too. Unfortunately, in spite of his happy and loving personality, some people fail to see who he is inside. They look at him like he's different, but he's not. So when you see him, his legs don't work. His mind works, his heart works. And I just wish everybody would just treat him normal. Um, people, are, people gotta see past the chair. This is a poem that I wrote when I was in sixth or seventh grade, he really inspires me to be a better person on the inside and be more positive towards people than I meet. People look, but they don't see him. They see a wheelchair, a little boy, skinny legs, a boy who cannot walk. 
He has cerebral palsy. Look past his chair. Look past his sickness. Look at his smiling face. He is a happy kid. Open your eyes and see him, my brother Kavika. And if people choose to look beyond Kavika's disability, they will find a young man who turned challenge into opportunity, who proved that an individual confined to sitting in a wheelchair can be a stand-up person who is inspiring to all. This is Shailen Torres reporting for Junior Sea Rider Television. In the open to most episodes of this show, you'll hear a student host say that Hikino brings you diverse stories that connect communities well, it's not just diverse stories that we introduce to you, it's also diverse people. Here's a story from Roosevelt High School that celebrates the diversity of its student body through an intriguing profile of a student who came to Hawaii from Japan. Toshi, he's kind of strange. He'll come in with his Wall Street Journal. I was just dressing, dressing like old man and like holding a pile of newspaper. So everybody must thought like, I'm like a 50 year old. With a cup of coffee in tow and a newspaper by his side, many mistake him for a teacher, but come to know that he's just a student with a unique style and big dreams. Satoshi moved from Japan to Hawaii at the age of 12 with his parents. Like many students who immigrate to America, Satoshi faced a language barrier. The English language learner program allowed him to improve his English. In terms of uh, Satoshi's speed or rapidity of exiting the program, it was very quick. Uh, when an ELL student comes in late in their academic career, it's very difficult to get rid of your accent a lot of the times. And because it's difficult to get rid of your accent, people still believe that you may not understand even though you do. Satoshi has been able to supersede these boundaries because no matter what, he, he has a great knowledge of himself. Satoshi. I remember Satoshi all the way from Stevenson. He was very shy back then, and he had this little distinctive high shorts and orange rolling bag. Shall we just put it here, right? I think when I came here, I, that's, the, that's the biggest thing that changed my life, actually. I went back in Japan. Japanese are basically taught to uh, like fit into the mainstream, not like here, and it's like individuality, characteristics. When I came to Hawaii and realized that I can be like w whomever I want here. I want to immerse myself into the local communities. I just want to conquer these differences and I want to talk to the people who are really comfortable enough to speak languages. With goal in hand, Satoshi is actively involved in school with student government, National Honor Society, Pizza and Policy, Green Club, and Spanish Club. Satoshi teaches us that being different in high school is a good thing. In Hawaii, where backgrounds and cultures are diverse, we are reminded to be accepting of these differences. This is Charlene Kawili signing off for Hikino. I know. Hikino often points out connections that not many people know about, but prove the world is a lot smaller than we think it is. Who would have thought there was a connection between a famous music school in Boston and Kekula Niihau o Kekaha? a small Hawaiian culture-based charter school on Kauai for children from Niihau families. Only on Hikino. I ta manawa mo i hui ai ki kumualaka i kula ki ki e o ki kula ni hau keka o ho kula ni klinin, Mr. Steven Weber. Walelo oia aole i loa ia ai ki tahi pa i tutulu i ki tahi lumi o tileo. Oia nau ta ohana pane mai lau Steven Weber, a pela i homata i ke o moolelo. O hele ho mei oia no ki kolua ta manawa ma loko kulumi o te leo ane i tutuloi. Ke ololu hiti ai te walau mei hea ha tau hana ma Berkeley College of Music. My position at, at Berkeley uh, College of Music is uh, that I'm a professor there. I teach in uh, the, the music technology uh, and professional writing division. And I thought it would be really great to bring those um, faculty over here to Keiku Lanihia. I didn't plan on what a unique and, and special spirit you guys have here. So I wanted to share that with my fellow faculty. And it just seemed like it would uh, be perfect to also add an educational component to that and bring um, the faculty over here to Keikulani'ihau. <laughs>
te ia pili ana me Berkeley loa a ina haumana ta manawa tūpono e hoolohe ai ina ano mele like ole e like me ka string trio, opera, jazz, blues, gospel, rock, apelaku. Um, second year we brought Darcel Wilson over, who was an R&B singer. Then the third time we had Gabrielle Goodman, uh, who was a, uh, a spiritual and gospel and R&B singer. All of the faculty that I bring over to Keikula at Niihau wind up uh, just walking on air by the time they're leaving because of the spirit of the place. And I think you know it makes them feel good too to be trying to share some educational things about music with uh, you know with the students here at, at Keikula Niia. You know we've had three years so far of uh, faculty exchange now between Berkeley College of Music and Keikula Niia and I'm hoping this is just the beginning and that we'll look back in, in another 20 years and uh, just be um, amazed and marvel at the uh, wonderful relationship that, is, uh, that has been developing over the decades. Thank you for taking the time to explore some of the most outstanding stories from Season 3 of Hikino. And thank you for allowing us to tell you about our Hikino experiences and how they have prepared us for our future endeavors. Being a part of the nation's first statewide student news network has given us the confidence that we Hikino can do. So look out, world. You're going to see great things from us. And in the fall, you'll be seeing great things from the next crop of student journalists as they bring you season four. Only on Hikino and only on PBS Hawaii. Broadcasts of Hikino are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hikino.